If you're new here, my name is Kale, I'm a surfer and a filmmaker, and here you'll find all sorts of epic surf content like tutorials to help you surf better, important reviews and more, so subscribe down below and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. Last year I was lucky enough to sneak down to Australia's first ever functioning wave pool, Urban Surf in Melbourne. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I did a review of the place as it was then and had a heck of a time, but there were some things I felt were missing. Now we're back to check out what they've changed. <laughs> All right, we're in. Woo! Last time we were here, there were a few obvious shortcomings that came up in the wave pool. One of the biggest ones was this big gap between total beginners and intermediates. There was nothing in the middle. And with the takeoff being such a challenging part of surfing, it was kind of an obvious thing that we needed to address. And with the current new settings at Urban Surf, I believe they may have successfully done it. This time I'm getting full special access to Urban's new wave menu, starting from the new cruiser setting and surfing all the way through to expert. Needless to say, I feel like a kid in a candy store. Cruiser sessions feature one of our Malibu turn settings that we have been refining over the last six to 12 months. It's really fun. It provides a point break style longboard and fish wave. That's awesome for novice surfers and people that have just progressed from the bays and done a learn to surf lesson with us. And it really provides a great opportunity for people to practice their leap to feed on a green water wave, start some basic turning, and also to really start to play around with different board types. the session because we found that for a lot of surfers that felt really comfortable in the base and not so comfortable in the intermediate they found the takeoff a little bit more difficult or that there were sections in the wave that were faster or slower in some areas and they couldn't compensate when they were riding their board so the cruiser sessions bridge the gap between beginner and intermediate Initially the cruiser session runs with a five wave set with 30 second gaps between each set. Later in the session though it pumps up to 10 wave sets with a 60 second gap in the middle, meaning that if there are a small number of people in your session you could easily catch two waves per set. I had an absolute blast on both the left and the right and could clearly see who this wave was built for. I could literally see myself taking a beginner, getting them started, and within one day, getting them cutting across the face of a wave. So I think that setting is built for the surfer who 
can pop up relatively consistently but is having trouble trouble reading waves and positioning when you take that out of the equation and you have this robotic setup where there's wave after wave in the same spot every time and it's this one foot perfect little right or left hander then it really sets the stage for fast track progression out of that beginner stage all the way up to the intermediate stage very quickly and I think that's what's most powerful about it. I'm just gearing up for the intermediate left session that I have coming up next and um, because it's not the advanced I'm sort of thinking like I'll need a, a, a lot of a lot of pop a lot of lightness in my board and this is where the the balsa version of my Sunova the signature model that I've been working on um, will really come into play it's super light super fast nice and flat I think it's going to work really well for the intermediate setting so just chucking the fins in and then we're out there of progression that's probably the setting that I'm most excited about for my surface but I mean even for me like just to work my back end like that and just clockwork just bang bang it doesn't get boring but it naturally lends itself to okay what's next what's the next level of surfing and that is a good question to ask because it opens up this myriad of opportunities to, to really do stuff that you're not used to so I mean halfway through I said to Kim I was like yeah I'm gonna try and sit up high and then do a reverse and I mean I didn't quite get the section for it you kind of have to manufacture it to, to be able to do that but um, the fact that I'm just able to sit there and just wait for this perfect two to three foot wall to come through and just tap and whack all the way to the to the inside is just absolutely incredible I can't wait to get my surface here. <laughs> Over the two lockdowns this year, we conducted a series of wave testing sessions with Wave Garden to refine and just make some minor tweaks to our intermediate turn settings. They were amazing before, but what we did was we slowed down some of the sections of the wave to provide greater consistency from takeoff to the end, which provided a more rippable wave it provided a more consistent coping and allows people to whack anywhere between three to six turns per wave. I was lucky enough to surf the intermediate again the following day. However, 
The wind had swung offshore, which in the ocean might be a great thing. However, I found that it really did shave off the rippableness of the waves in that setting. Looking back at the footage, it doesn't actually look too bad, but I certainly felt less advanced during the session. I dare say though that most intermediate surfers wouldn't actually notice the difference too much. Luckily though, the offshore wind really turns it on for the advanced setting, which is up next. Most of the time when you're surfing in the ocean, typically the barrel will be bigger at the start of the wave and smaller at the end and you can get you know, pinched on the exit. But what we've been working on is when you enter the barrel here, it actually grows and expands with time and in offshore conditions particularly, it really blows it open. A bit parched. I'm so parched, but now I can sit here and watch tubes just blow by. It's so sick. <laughs> oh my god, what a day! I mean, Kim and I are just cruising um, at, at Three Blue Ducks, and we're watching the most epic setting. Like, look, there's there's tubes happening here and over here, and I mean, this is just the perfect way to end day one. Um, tomorrow. Kim, what have we got? Well, you've got four sessions back to back. Four so. sessions? I'm going to be exhausted. I'm curious to see how you go. Fitness <laughs> test. <laughs> oh boy, but um, my first session tomorrow morning, I've got to be here at 5.30am, is expert. That's beast mode. It's finally available. See you guys there. Well getting home last night at about 9.30 or something, I was thinking, sweet, I'm gonna be in for like eight hours sleep, get up, <laughs> or seven hours sleep, get up at 4.30. I probably just lied there, just too stimulated from everything, too excited about today. It's blowing offshore, they've pumped out sets this morning. I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna need a huge nap, but I've got four hours of surfing ahead of me. So I'm just trying to sink into it a little bit and wake up. <laughs> Alright, roll it. I'm 
just swapping boards because this one tends to have a touch more hole, like with these these big channels in it. Um, these have slightly lighter channels, also a lighter board too. So because it's quite windy offshore, I kind of want to sink into the wave a little bit more. Even if it's just one or two percent, it makes a big difference. <laughs> setting has a maximum of 12 people per session. There are 12 waves in a set so everybody can take one but I had a bunch of bodyboarders in my session who really only wanted the first handful of waves and this is because after the first four to five waves of the set the tube gets a little wild and washy and is a little bit more difficult to ride. Now Urban provide free gaff helmets for expert sessions to keep your melon safe from hitting the bottom of the pool and the instructors are always on hand to lend some advice so feel free to challenge yourself a little bit. Advanced intermediates could surf this wave on their forehand but probably only advanced surfers and above could tackle it on their backhand. start to the day um, I mean I managed to get some really nice tubes but uh, that is really my Achilles heel backside tube riding so I'm gonna have a look back at the footage and do some analysis on myself and um, see what I could have done better one of the things that I noticed towards the end of the session is that the more you point and take a line toward the beach the better the outcome is generally the more tubes you make so I think that's a little adjustment that I made halfway through. A lot of them I was trying to slow down for, but I kept outgunning it. So you really do want to sit quite deep on these, on those barrels, but it's so heavy and it's just the most perfect tube for any sort of advanced surfer to, to jump into. The, the bodyboarders were frothing. So was I. <laughs> I've just finished up an entire week of surfing here at Urban and without doubt I can say that it's been one of the funnest weeks of my life. I think what's most exciting about an establishment like this, a working high quality wave machine, is that progression opportunities are going to go through the roof. A lot of people that I've been chatting to this week see Urban as their gym. They come here to get their fix for surfing. We're all addicted, right? We need that fix. And I think it's never going to replace the ocean. But what it is going to do is provide, finally, a controlled and on-demand system for getting waves when you want them and working on your surfing to progress. What a week. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you join me on Instagram as well, at Kale's Broccoli. 
make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what uh, questions do you have about the pool? Have you guys been here yourself? Did you love it? I bet you did. I certainly did. Thanks for having me, Urban. Guys, I'll see you soon. Yo.